channel. Today, we are gonna talk about metal detecting equipment. What are some of the need to haves and some of the nice to haves? So if you're new to metal detecting, or maybe you've been metal detecting for a while and you just wanna compare some tips and tricks with regard to equipment, stay tuned, this video's for you. All right, first of all, listen, I am not sponsored by any of these companies. Um, what I'm gonna talk to you about is the equipment that I use. And do you need all of this equipment? Absolutely not. Part of metal detecting is figuring out what works best for you. So what I'm gonna do is talk about a couple of the key, the key items you're gonna probably wanna think about. Do I need this uh, or not? And if so, what are some of the key features Benefits I might want to consider, for example, uh, if I'm looking for a finder's pouch or a hand trough. Okay, so we're going to go through these one by one. I'll also share some links both during the video as well as in the video description if indeed you want to learn more about any of these particular products. Okay, let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about is what's called a finder pouch or a finder's bag. This is the one I'm currently using at the moment, okay? It's manufactured by a company here called Omega Mill. And um, a couple of things you're gonna want to consider when you think about if you need a finder pouch, what are some of the features you're gonna wanna look for? Starting with the type of, um, the type of fixture you use to uh, hang it off your body. So most of them come with some type of a belt. Uh, be, be on the lookout for how thick the belt is and if that satisfies your needs. There are a few that have slings that are that are, are over the shoulder slings. I don't prefer that because it tends to get in the way of my swinging the actual metal detector. But you're going to want to think about size. These vary in terms of size, uh, how durable they are. I like how this is made out of almost like a denim-like cloth. Um, also, how can you clean it? Can you clean it? One of the features that I like about this particular brand is, and you can see I purposefully didn't clean this out since my last dig, but I want you to see how it has a mesh bottom here. So you can both um, drain water uh, in it, but also it will, you know, kind of uh, deposit the dust that you accumulate during the day. It has a couple of different pouches for both trash and your finds, as well as some other things that you may or may not want to carry, and I'll go over those in a moment. This particular one also has an integrated holster for my pin pointer. Most of these pin pointers will come with a holster that will, you know, attach to your belt, uh, either by snapping on or, you know, one that will loop through your belt. But that's something you're going to want to consider as well. You know, pinpointers are easy to lose. They're easy to misplace. You can forget where they are and, and perhaps you can go back and find them. But um, I like to have my pinpointer on some type of retractable cord like that. Uh, I think this was probably my first one from Garrett. Different in terms of size. It's almost like a vinyl type of uh, a product, which is nice in terms of staying dry, but it's hard in terms of cleaning. So in other words, if you pour some water in here, there's really nowhere for the water to go. It does have a separate second compartment, but this worked fine. Um, I wasn't real happy, however, with you know how thin the belt was. Okay, for my next need to have item is what uh, people refer to as a pin pointer. I just came off of a dig yesterday. I have not cleaned this up, but this is the Tech Point Pulse Induction Pin Pointer by Technetics. And a couple of things you're gonna wanna consider with regard to a pin pointer. Um, I do like the ability, as I said, to attach this to a retractable cord. Most of these come with some type of a, um, a light, an LED light, which does come in handy when you're detecting in the off hours. I also prefer to have an audible or an audio signal 
as well as a vibration signal. Um, that definitely comes in handy and the ability to program different modes, different levels of sensitivity. You're also going to want to um, understand and consider the type of battery that these require. For those of you that have metal detectors that also run off of batteries versus rechargeable batteries, it's nice to know if they're the same size type of battery just so they're compatible. All right, the next item I want to share with you, again, in the need to have category, is a hand size digging tool. I think probably one of the first things is you want to be mindful of is weight. Some of these are a little heavier than others. They also have a, a you know, thicker handle size. So if you have small hands like me or large hands, you just want to make sure that this is comfortable. Many of these also include a sheath a sheath, which is really helpful if you need some extra leverage as you're digging your plug. Be mindful of the type of serration. Some of these are serrated on one side versus two, okay? It's a different type of a serration. Um, length is also different. I happen to also like these that include uh, some, some measurement indicators on here as well. Generally, I think the thing you wanna understand is length, size, weight, serration, okay? But also pay attention to the holster. Pay attention to the holster. Some of these, like this one right here, just come with a loop. And while this is fine, you just need to make sure it fits whatever your belt is that you're using. Others will have a clip. While the clip's more convenient, there's some risk that, um, you know, it could separate from your belt. Another really nice alternative is what's called a Hori Hori knife. This one is from LL, ML Tools. What's a Hori Hori knife? Well, it's actually a Japanese gardening tool. And um, notice it's much smaller, okay? The profile's smaller, it's lighter. I actually prefer to take this into parks. Number one, it, um, it's less intimidating. It draws less attention to me. It's a little easier to um, get in and out of my holster. Often when I'm digging, and I'm approaching several targets. I will not always resheath or reholster these, but I will wrap this in into what I call a digging cloth. I'll show this to you and, and just sometimes put it right back into my finder pouch so I can pull it out and have easy access to it. But you're gonna definitely wanna consider, okay, a hand size digging tool like any of those that I've mentioned here. Um, Garrett produces these, Whites is what I have, Lesh, if I'm pronouncing that correct, correctly, they make a very popular one as well. There are videos on just these, on just these, okay? But again, I would place this in the need to have category. All right, the next item here is a digging shovel. I'm gonna say that this is probably a nice to have. Depending on the type of digging, the location, if you're doing a lot of relic hunting in fields, you'll probably wanna get one of these sooner rather than later. However, early on, a hand-sized digging tool will suffice. Um, I think the things you're gonna to wanna to consider here are weight, shaft length, okay, but also blade length. Notice this um, first one that I have here. I picked this up, it's, it's really from a smaller company, and the design, it turned out, actually was pretty poor. The blade here, the tip of the blade broke, actually, after my first use. Um, this one here, um, I was actually watching a video from South Coast Detecting, I believe, and saw that um, Aaron on South Coast Detecting was using this. I did a little research. I really liked it, and let me tell you why. And first of all, um, in, my, in my neck of the woods here, our soil is pretty good. It's not really dry. So some of the other ones you'll see have serrated sides here as well. You, may, you might want to consider that if your ground is dry and hard. But in the Midwest, our soil is a little bit more cooperative. But let me tell you, I really liked these petals, I'll call them here, because once your blade is down into the ground, you really can't dig more than, um, you know, those six or seven inches. This allows me still to kind of, you know, dig my plug as well. That's why you'll see very different lengths here in terms of the blade. So some of these are very long. They're almost, you know, almost like a triangle shape so that you, you can still get your foot on the top of the blade. But let me tell you, this has worked out really well. Surprisingly affordable. I believe I got this on eBay. And again, I'm not 100% sure 
of this, but I think this was under $40. It was pretty reasonable. If not, uh, it was under 50, something like that, but it's, it's held up really well, okay? So consider design, the weight. Also, one other thing is the handle type. Some of these have an O handle. Um, some have a closed loop handle. I really like the T handle. That really works well for me. Um, color may or may not be something you want to consider, um, but, but primarily, do you or do you not need a serrated blade? What type of blade? And don't forget about that foot pedal there as well. Okay, for those of you that are doing some beach detecting, you're definitely gonna want to consider a beach scoop. This one is from CKG. Why do I like this? Well, first of all, it's got the ability where you can actually kind of step on the back and scoop you know, the sand up. It is um, steel, it's quite durable. I found this here, it's called a modus grip from Extreme Scoops, which is also really nice to help lift that heavy um, scoop up from the sand. Okay, one other item here I'm gonna kind of put in the need to have category, and I think that's the case for safety, is a good pair of gloves. Uh, I can't tell you the number of times I've already come across a knife, a uh, broken bottle, a piece of glass, something sharp that um, really could give you a nice piece of hurt. So I actually like to bring a couple of these along. I mean, often, you know, Friends and family will join me on my hunt. So I have a, a few pairs here, but do consider a nice durable pair of gloves to protect okay, your Okay, in the nice to have category here, um, I'm gonna put a pair of knee pads. You know, as you know, if you've done any metal detecting already, or if you plan on it, you're gonna be doing a lot of kneeling, a lot of digging, and it'll wreak havoc on your clothes. This may protect you from or prevent you from having to change clothes every time you metal detect as well. All right, so. this is probably my favorite nice to have item. Okay, this is a digging cloth. So especially if you're in a park, you're on a permission and you're digging a plug and you, you need to you know, scoop out, dig out some more dirt. Yes, you can put that to the left, right of your, of your hole, but it's gonna look kind of messy when you try to repair the plug when you put the dirt back in there. So a digging cloth is great because you can set this next to your, your plug, okay? And you know just place your dirt on there. And uh, I mentioned earlier, I will use this then to, you know, actually then wrap my, my, my uh, Hori Hori knife in this and I place this back into my finder's bag. Uh, Mrs. History Digger made this for me. I absolutely love it. It's, it's a type of, um, I'll call it a muslin, okay? A very, you know, it's almost like a canvas type of a product, okay? It looks cardboard. Somebody thought it was cardboard in one of my earlier videos, but this has served me so well. Uh, a few times when the ground's wet and I didn't have my knee pads, I've even like, you know, used this to kneel on. It's super helpful. And you'll notice I have my logo on here. So I have this YouTube channel, of course. So it's a, a wonderful way to, um, you know, advertise your channel as well. But listen, this is probably my favorite nice to have item. I absolutely love it and highly recommend it. It comes in handy for many, 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 many things. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about are some um, items to help with your finds. So, hey, listen, if you're older like me and you need reading glasses, um, I have to tell you, I've actually just started wearing sometimes bifocals. So rather than have to, you know, put glasses on and off my face and deal with them, um, you know, getting in the way. These are nice just to be able to have on all the time. And uh, if, if, if in the event I'm trying to pull a date off a coin. And sometimes that's not enough. Um, inside, inside one of the pockets on my finder bag, there are a couple things that I keep all the time. So, you know, you, first of all, you want to have some type of a cleaning brush. Um, Gun cleaning brushes work really well. Toothbrushes work great as well, just to be able to get the dirt, you know, off of the coin. Um, for my silver coins, primarily, I don't like to do this on anything other than silver. A little bottle of water to spray them down to uh, reveal the date. But then a, a loop sometimes is really, really helpful. And um, a loop is a jeweler's tool. And this one I, I, I enjoy because if you notice, it, it includes an integrated LED light as well. So for those really hard to read dates, having a loop handy inside of my 
um, inside my finder pouch, along with some of my cleaning tools. Okay, the next items, if you've seen some of my videos, maybe you've heard me talk about these, but target IDs or VDIs, these are numbers that will, on some metal detectors, show up that will suggest what type of um, metal, what type of target you you may be, you may be, um, searching for that that you may have hit over underneath your coil okay as you get to know your detector you won't need these but this is really helpful i'm new to the equinox so notice what i did i've laminated this okay i wear this around my neck it's on a retractable um, cord these retractable cords by the way are really nice for a variety of things as well you could use them for your your um, pinpointer as well but having a target id a vdi cheat sheet I think has been a great idea. You know, in most uh, most of my videos, you'll see me at the end, end of the video, I'll often talk about, okay, so what did we find? And, and I'll get the finds cleaned up. I have them laid out on a nice cloth like this. Um, my, my wife actually made these for me. Um, these were not terribly expensive. These are just iron-on transfers. We created a little logo. So I'll carry some of these with me just as a cleanup towel as I'm metal detecting. But it's nice to have something like this as well to display you're fine on. All right, let's talk about footwear. If indeed you're gonna be on the beach, you're doing some water detecting, you're gonna to wanna to consider the type of footwear that's appropriate there. Um, in warm weather, it might be a sandal, um, some type of uh, water water shoe, or you know, a waterproof boot. If, in, if indeed it's very muddy, it's very wet. Let me tell you though, I think no matter where you are, it's nice to have a separate second pair of shoes in your vehicle. So I will often detect in my boots, and then when I get back to my vehicle, I will switch shoes to a clean pair of shoes. And at the same time, I'll also leverage, you know, some, I take these with me, these are just simply uh, scrubbing towels by, by Gojo. You can buy these at a hardware store, you can buy these online. Um, they're really nice because they, they have a bit of surfactant in them, you can wash up, you don't need really water, and they kind of dry by themselves too. Not quite like a hand sanitizer, but, but kind of the same thing. But just to get that grime and you know, stuff off of your, off of your hands. This was So if any of you do curb strip detecting, um, number one, you want to make sure that you're allowed to do that in your town, in your city. But even if you're authorized to do it, a lot of homeowners aren't real happy about you detecting on what they perceive to be, you know, their property. And listen, I will do, I will wear this for two reasons. Number one, for safety. You know, you're close to the street. But also, you know, um, candidly, you know, it gives the appearance that you, you may be a city worker, you're somebody with authority. All that it does is maybe, just maybe, prevent somebody from stopping me and um, ask me what I'm doing or interrupting me. Okay, maybe you've noticed these, these stickers here. First of all, um, these are things that I've printed up. I created these. Um, it's my logo. It's my design. These are fun. These are fun to have. I, I will share these with homeowners as a very small thank you, you know, for detecting their properly, property. It's fun to swap trade stickers. It advertises your YouTube channel. Just something fun um, to, to do. But I will tell you, I have had hobby cards printed as well. I've got a couple different designs of these. You know, they've got my name on there, my address. Um, I use these for permissions, or if I'm stopped by, you know, a, a, uh, a police person who's not sure what I'm doing, that type of thing. Again, it, it tells people who I am, it, it creates some credibility. That's also why I do these things. So you may have seen in some of my videos, you may have seen me wearing a History Digger hat. I believe I had these made through Logo Up. They, they print hats in small batches as well. Not cheap, but you know, it is something affordable. And also, um, you know, we do, we have some t-shirts we've had made up as well. There are a variety of places that can do this. You can do that yourself with iron-on transfer. Well, there you have it, folks. Those are some of my metal detecting equipment, uh, tips, tricks, suggestions, things to consider uh, as, you're, as you're getting into the hobby. So, and Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you're able to get out and do some metal detecting. Happy digging.